Okay. So block 7, The Greatest Generation, Section 2, Rise of the Dictators, with the section beginning the Sudetenland. All right, so after the Anschluss of Austria, uh, let's have a look-see at the map, please. Greater Germany is in red, and you can see that it includes the Saar, it includes the Rhineland, it includes all Germany, it includes East Prussia, and now it includes Austria. And it is surrounding, on three sides, the independent nation of Czechoslovakia. Uh, Czechoslovakia is the gray and the orange, okay? Gray and orange is Czechoslovakia. Czechoslovakia is sticking like a missile right into the heart of Germany. Well, Hitler's irredentism and his belief in all Germans should live in Germany means, you see this orange part, this orange part of Czechoslovakia? That orange part of Czechoslovakia is known as the Sudetenland. And the Sudetenland is a G ethnically German part of Czechoslovakia. That the people who live in the orange sections here are ethnically German, although they are living in Czechoslovakia. Hitler says, hey, there are Germans there. They ought to live in Germany. Czechoslovakia says, ha, 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 hell no. Hell no for two reasons. One, the richest industrial areas of Czechoslovakia are in the Sudetenland. And two, mountains, which provide the only way for Czechoslovakia to defend itself from Germany, are also located in the Sudetenland. Czechoslovakia says, absolutely not, we are not giving up any part of Czechoslovakia to you, Herr Hitler. And the Czech army mobilizes. They say, we're going to defend Czechoslovakia. And they mobilize into you know, these mountainous regions. Hitler starts to get his army ready to go, and this freaks out the British and the French. The British and the French say, no, 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 no fighting, no fighting. Can't afford to fight. We don't want to fight. How are we going to fight? Let's negotiate. Let's talk. So Hitler invites them to talk. Um, the British suggest London as a conference site. The Germans say no. Uh, a neutral site is recommended. The Germans say no. Hitler makes um, the British and the French come to him in the city of Munich, down here in southern Germany. And this is known as the Munich Conference. It takes place in September of 1938. <coughs> and here are our characters at the Munich Conference. We have Herr Hitler. <clears throat> um, here's uh, Mussolini, representing Italy. This is Edward Deladier uh, of France. And kind of the main character, or the tragic character, if you will, uh, in this drama, is uh, Neville Chamberlain. And poor Neville is uh, the Prime Minister of England. He comes from a very old British political family. His father had been Prime Minister. His brother before him had been Prime Minister. Um, Chamberlain was genuinely a, a peaceful man at heart, a good Christian, um, and he went to, to Munich to bargain with Hitler. Here's another picture of Neville and Hitler. Uh, Chamberlain was not too thrilled upon meeting the man, but figured he had to deal with him anyway. Well, to make a long story short, what happens at Munich <coughs> is that Hitler promises that Britain and France give Germany the Sudetenland. Uh, they take that piece of Czechoslovakia and they give it to, uh, give it to Germany. The, who is not invited to the conference? The Czechs are not invited to the conference. Uh, Czechoslovakia plays no role in the future of its own country. Uh, but the British and the French give up the Sudetenland to Hitler in exchange for Hitler's promise that the Sudetenland land will be the last piece of land he makes. Uh, he will make no more requests for land. He will make no more requests for territory. Hitler says, look, this is the last German part of Europe that's not in Germany. Give me this and I will ask for nothing more. Britain and France uh, appease Hitler. Um, they say, okay, just promise. Hitler says, I promise. 
Chamberlain, Neville Chamberlain returns to England from the Munich Conference waving the piece of paper in his hand. He says, we have peace in our time. I have met with Herr Hitler and we have peace in our time that your boys, your sons will not have to go to Europe to fight any more trenches uh, like they did last time around. Hitler goes back to Berlin and kind of chuckles to himself. Uh, it's only a piece of paper. Munich became the watchword for a policy known as appeasement. Appeasement is a policy where an aggressor is given what they want in exchange for not wanting anything else or in exchange for leaving the other party alone. I think we all have a sense of the moral hazard of appeasement, that if you give a bully something, he's just going to come back you know, the next day and demand more. But that is what happened at Munich, that Czechoslovakia was kind of given up, um, or the Sudetenland was given up to Hitler in exchange for his word. Going back to the map, Munich is in March of 1938, excuse me, in September of 1938. Munich is in September of 1938. In March of 1939, Hitler takes over the rest of Czechoslovakia. The Czechs, having lost the Sudetenland, had no place to defend their country, and Hitler conquered it without a shot being fired. Finally, in March of 1939, the world, and the British and the French especially, woke up to the fact that Hitler could not be trusted. Hitler was not someone with whom they could deal. And the British and the French, finally, in early 1939, begin to rearm. Um, desperately, they uh, establish conscription. They start to build up their air forces, their navies, their armies. But uh, by 1939, Hitler's had a six-year jump uh, on them. In the spring of 1939, Hitler threatens Lithuania over here, um, and Lithuania hands over the port city of Memel. Um, no one is willing to fight for Lithuanian territorial integrity, so the Lithuanians appease Hitler. You know, they, what was their choice? They couldn't fight Hitler, so they gave him that port. Um, <coughs> Hitler is now in control of all of Central Europe. For the most part, he is allied with Italy. He has taken over Austria, the Sudetenland, Czechoslovakia, the port city of Neville. And finally, in 1939, the British and the French wake up to the potential threat 